I think the U.S. can be a real forward-thinking um, leader in the in the in the way toward democracy, and we're not getting that done through the U.N. It is not happening. Uh, more countries are are curtailing the press. They're uh, censoring the internet. Uh, they're getting more repressive instead of more open and more responsive and more accountable and more democratic. So, I think that you know, like-minded folks who, who believe in reform, believe in the UN, believe in the mission, and I do, want to reform it and want to see it work. And I would like that to be something that our committee, in a bipartisan way, can work toward. But that's not the only thing. I think that we need to restructure a lot of the aid programs that have been ineffective, that are duplicative, um, that have not really gotten to the people where they're supposed to get to. And uh, maybe there's a different way that we can restructure our aid program and the way that we look at America's role in the world. And, and so that we get uh, uh, the result that we want, which is not for countries to love us. That's a wonderful side benefit. But it's to get people the kind of governments that they need and deserve and that all people aspire to, democracies and freedom. And we're not going to change countries' governance, but uh, we can control what we can control, and that is the money that we have. So what are you not talking all countries about? Get, is that uh, USAID money? Is it the State well, Department example, money? Or? Let's take Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's a good example of where aid programs have not been productive. How much money has Egypt received from successive administrations, Republican and Democrats, throughout you know, the, the, the reign of Mubarak. We're talking billions, 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 and billions. What have we gotten? We have gotten a, a, a government that had been more repressive than ever, that did not allow freedom of expression to any dissidents, and, and we saw it, it, it finally toppled the Mubarak government. In spite of... Uh, Egypt being the second largest recipient after Israel of U.S. aid. So y you've got to look at Egypt and say, there's something wrong with the way that we're structuring our aid program. Because if after all of this money, we are producing the end product, a Mubarak government that despises its own people and have allowed him, had allowed him, to create this false dichotomy that his, his false choice was, it's either me or the Muslim Brotherhood. Because he never allowed the moderate voices to rise up. No one was allowed to speak. And so, of course, the U.S. said, we don't want this uh, extremist government, the, the Muslim Brotherhood, to take over, so we'll keep betting on Mubarak. But there's never a time for us to sit back and, and examine what we're doing. And met some of us, proposed in amendments that we never were, su were successful in to channel that military aid to go to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, the moderate voices in Egypt. But Egypt had a plan with the United States that NGOs would only get funded if they were approved by Mubarak. So they were extensions of his government. So no matter whether we gave the money to the military or whether they gave the money to NGO, it was in fact going to the same place. So I think Egypt is an excellent example of where we could have done a lot more good if we had really looked at the way our aid program is being funded and, and we could have convinced, and it's our fault, we didn't get enough votes to restructure the aid, but we need, we need to do that everywhere, everywhere. We need to look at uh, what we're doing, what is the purpose, and whether it's going to the right people. And we're not responsible for regime changes throughout the world. I'm not saying that our aid program is meant and designed for that. It's not to tear down or to build up Mubarak, but it did end up building up Mubarak. And that was not our intention, but it was, oh, we can't have the Muslim Brotherhood, so we'll, we'll give this guy billions of dollars. And then in the end, we have a president who rightfully said Mubarak must go, and he, and he should have gone many years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing in so many countries. You look at Yemen, another country where unrest is taking place right now as we speak. Somebody's heads are, you know, the heads are being beaten to a bloody pulp. And the guy who's in charge there is our ally. 
what kind of an ally is that? And why is it that, I mean, they're just big questions. How is it that in Libya, gaddafi has got to go because he is a ruthless dictator? And why is it that in Yemen, those leaders don't have to go when they're also massacring people? And it's a, it's a difficult, I don't envy President Obama because the decisions that he makes um, to put our guys and gals in, in, in harm's way and, and uh, uh, everybody second guessing him, it's not easy. But, Let me ask, yeah. what, what would you do in Yemen? Because certainly the president talks about uh, the threat of terrorist groups, Al Qaeda and others there, and you know, we've seen you know, what, what's come out of there. But what would, you, what would you recommend? What would you do in terms of aid uh, to Yemen? How would, you, how would you determine? And your question really gets at the broader question of what is the U.S. role throughout, throughout the world? What role do we play in Yemen? Um, should we be involved in Yemen? Do we make the case for sitting on our hands? As callous as that sounds, but have we gotten to the point where you can make the case for sitting on our hands? Do we protect everyone who is in harm's way because of their despotic governments. I mean, and, and the president had said, let me see, and I, I don't want to misquote him, where is he? I think it was President George Bush who said, we'll go after terrorists wherever they are. And It wasn't you know, true then, yeah. it's not true now, and it can never be true. And especially now, with our dire economic situation, uh, and, and it sounds good, and it's nice rhetoric, and no one wants to say, that isn't true. You no one wants to be the skunk at the picnic, but I don't mind being that. It can't. It can't be true, and it it will never be true. President Obama says we cannot stand idly by when a tyrant tells his people and innocent men and women face brutality and death at the hands of their own government. But we do stand idly by. We do it every day, and we always have. We do so now, and we always will be. And there's no. There's no way that we could not take that position. Why? Because we're not the world's superpower. And we can't be the policeman for every, every country. Um, we look away when it is convenient to look away. And we get involved when there are U.S. interests. So for Yemen, we have to ask ourselves, what is the strategic U.S. national security interest for getting involved in Yemen? And it's a tough question. And if the answer is there is none, then we have to be honest and say, we hope and we will work with our allies to have them do the right thing. But could, can we really get involved every time that the United Nations passes a resolution? It, it can never be true. It has never been true because we. We don't have that kind of a military. The American people would not support it. And no one wants to see those, those grisly images on your front pages and on the TV news. But the reality is that that kind of brutality goes on in many places. So our overriding concern must always be, our question is, what is the US national security interest in going to that country and getting involved? And uh, the president, to my thinking, has not made it clear to me why we are doing these operations in Libya. I will feel better when I get home and I'm able to hear what, what he had to say today. And I've had a busy day, and I don't know, but I know that he was going to address it today. And Basically what he said in that quote that you just said, that you just quoted, just saying, basically, so that's, that's basically what he said. And and let me tell you, when, when that operation is over, there will be no better supporter for President Obama and that military operation than me and my fellow Republicans, not to make a partisan. But people will turn away, uh, mostly folks from his own party, will turn away from, from whatever operation, military operation he's involved with, and we will be there supporting it. Just like I spent two and a half hours on the House floor on Thursday um, defending uh, against the Kucinich resolution 
to immediately withdraw from, from Afghanistan. And that, that, that's President Obama's operation. And he had more Republican votes that, in, in terms of percentage than he did Democrats. And the same thing with Libya. But it doesn't mean that I can't say right now, I don't see an overarching U.S. national security interest in being there. And I do hope that, as he said, that he was going to have the international partners uh, get more involved. But been there, done that, we should not fool ourselves into what those international partners are all about. We know what that coalition has been like in Iraq and what that coalition has been in Afghanistan. And, you know, a couple of French planes and a couple of, um, a couple of fighter jets from Qatar and, uh, does not a coalition make. At the end of the day, it's us. And it's whether we're willing to do it in Libya and when the, the unrest begins in Iran, and I hope it does, what do we say to the Iranian people? Oh, we were willing to take on Gaddafi's army because we could crush them in a heartbeat, because we can. But the Iranian uh, infrastructure there that he's got, are we willing to take them on? Will we stand with the Iranian people when they rise up? Because that quote will come out. We cannot sit idly by when a tyrant fill in the blank. That's Ahmadinejad, and that's, those are all the bad guys. So I'm not second-guessing the president. I want him to do the right thing, and I know that his heart is, is in the right place. And when push comes to shove, we will be out there. The Republicans will be out there supporting him. But we're reluctant to get to, to be the cheerleaders because we know those, uh, those uh, summer soldiers and sunshine patriots will fade away and we will be there um, defending his decision to stand up for freedom and against tyranny. It's in our nature, it's in our hearts, and we want to do the right thing. But um, there comes a time when you have to draw the line in the sand and why Libya and not other places. And I don't have a good answer. I don't know how he can answer it. Is that, em is that emerging as the emerging as the Obama doctrine? But but I wanted to go Excellent. back. Yes. I wanted I wanted to go back though to the, the uh, Yemen question. I'm not quite sure I got uh, you know, an answer about um, what would your position be uh, as a leader on the Hill well, about whether or not we should on be Yemen. There. We have yeah. had a stake there because we have supported that regime, and we have a responsibility to tell the leader. He cannot mistreat his people. In, that, in Yemen, we can't say that we have a vital U.S. national security uh, at stake, that there's a U.S. interest at stake. It doesn't pass that test unless somewhere there is, and I just don't know of it. And we're not there to save American lives, and we're not there to save American interests. But we are responsible for helping that person be in power. So. When it gets to the point where we must get involved, I think that in Yemen, we owe it to, for our own conscience to do something if they keep firing upon uh, the innocent protesters because we've been part of that problem. We have set this up by saying that he's our ally. Now he's gotten rid of his cabinet, he's taking all the right steps, but while he's still got his military in the rooftops shot, firing at protesters, um, we've got to get more involved diplomatically before we send any of our military options. There are a lot of things that we can do. It's a small country. We, we don't have to, to go in militarily uh, with a coalition or otherwise. Let's try the diplomatic route and let's, let's tell him that has got to stop. That is, that's just not acceptable, especially to some, a country that has received aid and has gotten a lot of assistance in many ways from the U.S.